Hello and welcome back. I am 13 and uh, Minor Housekeeping Life is Happening this week. So we're canceling the stream tomorrow night, doing a bonus show tonight on Tuesday. Um, and we're going to be playing Orzov Super Friends. So I know I said that I was considering Blue White Control, but we did actually get our full list for the Pioneer League. So we kind of got a chance to see what everybody's playing and see what's doing well. And Blue White Control is actually doing quite well. So might just see how that actually settles out and then try a stock list as opposed to just try to brew something and kind of go into a blind. So we're doing something fun tonight. Also, everybody's playing copycat. Well worth mentioning. So Orzov Super Friends. This is going to be pretty similar to modern where this might actually be a fringe archetype just because there's some very powerful planeswalkers. But this format only does well when board clears are actually good. So let's break it down. First and foremost, we are rocking Kaya Orzov Usurper. She is going to be the poster child for this deck. Her plus one eats the yard, gains us life to keep us around. We can end up exiling pithy needle for other planeswalkers and kind of just threatens an ultimate late game if we end up getting to it we also get a rock liliana the last hope i don't actually think her minus is very relevant in this format sorry her plus that minus is on creatures is very good in the format but we're still going to give it a shot the minus two is not going to pick up many creatures but she ultimate she wins the game and She's just a powerful planeswalker, so we're going to be rocking her. And then big bad boy Soren. So Soren, if you never played him in standard, this card is ridiculous. So you get a draw card, you get to drain the opponent, and then he gets to come down and kill a problem and then start actually ticking up. For six mana, he's he, he is quite strong. So again, value of this deck is going to be greatly dependent on if fumigates good we are only rocking two fumigates but we have deck and stones multiple other things Thoughtseize is possibly the best card in the format at the moment probably only comparable to oko but there's not very many turn one plays and Thoughtseize just interrupts your opponent so well and the burn decks are burn decks but you you kind of don't really mind paying the two life in this format and then last but not least we are going to get a little cheeky with our elder spell elder spell is going to make it so that we can alt fun things like liliana get rid of our opposing okos and all the like then we are actually rocking a suite of the oaths uh i'm sure everybody at this point knows that i play stupid cards oath of kaya is going to come down ping something again gain us life i am mildly concerned about my life total with this deck uh, and then whenever an opponent with attacks a Planeswalker you control with one or more creatures, Oath of Kai deals two damage to it and you gain two life. So if we're getting a critical board state of Planeswalkers, Oath of Kai is just going to protect them. Then we've got Oath of Liliana, enters an Edicts, Bogles is a deck, it's a deck weak to board clear, so hopefully that's not going to be much of a problem, but Edict is also strong in a format with things like Gurmag Angler, then... Um, if we have planeswalkers entering, we're also getting zombie tokens to actually block for our planeswalkers. And then obviously big girl Elspeth because she just has a fantastic badonkadonk. Six mana, she closes games. She is amazing. Uh, if I'm ever playing a deck that can support her, I'm probably going to figure out a way to jam her because she is so good. But that's the deck. Uh, really trying to hate on opponent's graveyard. Trying to gain some life to make it so that we get up to our six mana planeswalkers. And then hopefully we're just going to be stronger. Um, there is the Fires of Invention Nexus of Fate combo deck running around. Um, combo decks are kind of going to be hard for us. But I'm really excited to give this one a shot. And obviously taking the play here. All right, Inner Planner Lens can gain us some life. We have a deck and stone on two on the play. I'm happy with all of this. Uh, Oath of Lily is going to come down. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to have to see what we've got here, but we have three mana and Ashiok and Oath of Lily and removal. Basically all I want in a hand. Soren's better as a top deck, but when you run four, six drops, it's pretty likely you're going to have one of them in your opening hand. I think the math is something in the ballpark of like 60%. I know Frank Carson did an article of four ofs, but it's been a little while since I've read it. All right, tap Godless Shrine on one. Here you go. We probably look like Abzan at this point. From what I can tell, Abzan wasn't doing fantastically. Oh, uh, jigs up. We're getting thought seized. I assume they take Ashiok here. If they're black and blue, they probably have Tasker, if not at least Fish. 
whatever, playing with some spice. It's also possible that removal isn't very live in this matchup if they're removal based, especially like Perlink Ancient. They can just bounce it in response to any of the kill effects. Probably also pausing to read this slew of. I guess it's only these two cards. Deck and Stone is basically considered the best targeted white removal in the format, which is a little bit sad, but. Taking the Oath of Liliana. Interesting. Alright, Kai is pretty strong. I guess we'll see if they have another Thoughtseize. I'd prefer to run out Kaya over Ashiok because Ashiok's essentially a 5 and done, where Kaya actually gets to uptick and also be a win condition. Really depends on what my opponent's doing, though. I don't think I have enough to go on here. There are a couple of four color decks running around. Oath of Nyssa fixes fairly nicely. Mana Confluence is technically a card. Alright, well, that's a little depressing. Could be looking at a JVP deck. Just little baby flip Jace. I assume they care about their graveyard. Also, don't know why they didn't run out an additional land here. It's highly unlikely they have triple Thoughtsies. Alright, so Esper. Uh, this might be the actual Esper control list. This might be the approach deck. Sure. Alright, well, gonna eat the yard proactively here. Also see if I can get an idea of what they're on. Thought sees absorb heroes downfall. Okay, so it is the Esper control list. The approach of the second sun has been a very strong win condition for our opponent's deck, but I don't think that everybody has decided to run it yet. Castle lock lane. All right, well I know what I'm doing at end step. Not activating Ashiok because. Opponent hasn't actually shown us a Hero's Downfall in hand yet, and I don't really get much more out of Minusing other than potentially seeing a Approach of the Second Sun. And because they are Control, Castle Lock Lane, don't really care about losing the life, I just want to see more cards. Alright, there's a Thought Seize. I didn't know if they're Gideon. All right, let's see what you got. Supreme Verdict and Dig Through Time. All right, well, with Ashiok out, I'm not really going to be doing anything. Like, they won't be able to cast this. I also don't have many creatures. This is representing a longer-term problem, so I guess we're going to take that. We're not going to pay life, and then we're going to make it so that Soren comes down even bigger. Both of Gideon reads create two core allies, and then whenever a Planeswalker enters, it gets an additional loyalty counter. So if we top deck a land, we can just Soren. He's going to enter with seven, and we get a plus. It's going to be awesome. I also wouldn't be too surprised to see opponent fire off a Supreme Verdict here just to get rid of the core allies. They are at 14. I have two in hand that aren't really doing anything productive for them. Yep. <laughs> Tokens down. And they have blue available. So I do need to be a little wary of Spell Pierce. It's one of the better counter spells in the format at the moment. But I think we just have to run. I mean, worst case, we've got Castle Lock Lane and we can continue drawing. So. Soren! Alright, and opponent F6. So I get a plus. Revealing a swamp. Alright, I guess we'll see if they drew any Planeswalker removal. I don't think I've ever gotten close to ulting him. Create a number of 1-1 Black Knight creature tokens with lifelink equal to the highest life total among players. <laughs> uh, doesn't really do a whole lot with opponent's Supreme Verdict in hand, but... That's fine. Why did this get revealed? Uh, opponent did top, so they might have something useful here. 
a swamp. All right, well, we're looking for another six mana Planeswalker and did not get it. Guess we're going to go draw on. We have a couple of three mana Planeswalkers we can draw on too. Yeah, that's not really relevant. Let's down tick. Just keep their yard as clear as possible. They did actually show us a dig through time. They have a Sphinx's Revelation, a couple of Fatal Pushes. This looks like a... Uh, I don't know what this looks like. Secure the Waste? Sphinx's Rev? For two. All right, two Sphinx's Revs and Dig Through Time is slightly greedy, but they have a lot of dead cards in their deck versus us, so I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, deck and Fumigate aren't really doing us any favors. Opponent has seven mana. All right, there's a dig through time. They're tapping out for it. Really digging for the hero's downfall. But Soren is drawing us cards. They may be lands at the moment, but he is drawing us cards. Seven lands, I think I'm actually supposed to eat the dig through time. Oh, Soren, you're not really what I was looking for here. Need to mute for one moment. All right, sorry about that. First things first, let's reveal Soren. We get a lily. So I can gain two life at the bare minimum here. Again, I think my logic is I do actually want to mill this. If they miss on a land, they won't be able to dig again. Then let's go ahead and filter into black, black white. Then that way we can use one of the blacks for Lily here. Gains us some life, then we can Soren. I guess that sequencing wasn't really necessary, but it's fine. Well, plus Lily, no targets. Soren, his ultimate is six, but they have to sack a creature. That actually doesn't feel very relevant. So let's go ahead and get a 2-2 body out there. And I suppose we'll just ship it over to opponent. I mean, honestly, kind of lackluster flips with Soren, but I feel pretty far ahead. We have four Planeswalkers on the field, an actual creature, and... Just multiple card advantage outlets. Plus, likely going to make 14 here. It's going to take the Supreme Verdict and four mana out of my opponent's hand. I don't know. I could also see just a Fatal Push hitting this. and I guess we'll have to see what they do. If they actually have a real clock, uh, that will definitely change how I look at things. This is six mana, an Aetherling, huh? All right. So this is one of the original hard-to-answer threats. They can flicker it for a blue mana. So they can flicker it away, clear the board. If I go to remove it, they just flicker it. So it can't be blocked. Grows and shrinks. Wow, that's so heartbreaking. Guess first things first, we'll shrink it. Then I can alt opponent will have to supreme verdict. Whatever, let's just take a look. If we draw the right card, we're we're in a happy spot. I think we're just going for card advantage versus a control deck. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So 
I get to deck and stone this, they're going to have to flicker it. Actually, does that matter? First things first, this thing doesn't have flying, so let's get in. Then I think we just bait with the fumigate first because then that's going to force opponent to flicker this. And then it will come back at the next end step, which is my turn. So then I can murderous rider it and it'll be gone for the turn. So let's go with fumigate. Lily plus doesn't actually do a whole lot for me here, but. I mean, they have an Aetherling. Only so much you can do about that. Yep. Works for me. Then let's create another 2-2. Two -two. And the reasoning for my sequencing here is they do get to flicker it again, but... It won't be able to attack. Which just gives me more time with my Planeswalkers. And I honestly don't care about casting this Murderous Rider. It's fine. I don't lose life. He gets countered. It's all good. Yep, you get to take my deck in stone, which actually turns my castle lock lane back on, so kind of okay with that. What is this now? Supreme Verdict on the Vampire. All right. Uh, I don't know what read that gives me. That probably means that they drew another Supreme Verdict. Wow, this is just abysmal. All right. Um, let's do this first. See if I actually draw into a better out. like that, then yeah, I can cast Elspeth. Um, actually, do I want to do that? I think what I want to do is pick up the Murderous Rider so I can try to remove Aetherling at end step again. So I have six mana available to me. That can be Elspeth or that could be Murderous Rider. We're so close to ulting. We're just going to cast the Murderous Rider. All right, I'm sorry. I know that this is indecisive, but with multiple Planeswalkers, there's a lot of different routes I can take. Pick up Murderous Rider. Oh, we hit the other Elspeth. All right, then... I need to do this in my end step, which means I ult him. Ah, screw it. Let's go for the kill. We're going to have three mana left over this turn anyway. Hey! <laughs> All that for nothing. Poor sequencing on my part. I apologize for that. All right. Uh, Settle the Wreckage won't actually answer Aetherling. Anguished Unmaking is a perfect bait spell to kill it. Kemball will actually make it so that all their counter spells are awful. Collective Brutality is Duress Mode. It's going to be significantly better than the Sorcery Speed Deck and Stone. Pithy Needle can come in for any of their Planeswalkers or the Aetherling. Authority of the Councils is so cute. This is in here for copycat, but let's see if we've got room for it. Uh, Obnixilis is just some pseudo card advantage. The Fumigate's bad. Elspeth is actually kind of meh. For six mana, I don't want them to be able to just counter her. Creating a couple of 1-1 one -one soldiers doesn't even stop the Aetherling, so we're good there. Uh, Oath of Gideon did show a little bit of strength there. I don't know. Oath of Liliana is probably worse. Oath of Liliana gets to be a moderately reasonable clock, though. I don't know. Just trim a Pithy Needle and not bring in Authority of the Consuls. This is worse than Pithy Needle for Aetherling, so if we're not bringing in all of our Pithy Needles, it's probably fine. Uh, Kalidus also probably could have been a cut. But he's a bomb, and he eats the tokens from Oath of Lily.
Um, this is medium, but opponent's going to have discard, so I think I'm going to hang on to it just because it has land drops, all the colors I need, and a thought sees back if opponent doesn't take it. Fixing my opponent's mana here if they're missing black is a little sad, though. All right, so that shock to me reads of opt. A lot of opponents have been doing that. I'm not a huge fan of that line, but if this was a spell pierce, they got me. Yep, there's the opt. Okay, hostage taker can take a creature or artifact. They can get one of our tokens, I suppose. Dovin's veto is probably the worst thing in here for us. The detention sphere is also kind of medium. I don't know why they kept in the verdicts. It's not like we have many creatures. Guess we're taking the veto. And we did unfortunately give our opponent black mana, but it's not like they can take much advantage of it at the moment. Uh, I could actually see it being correct to take the detention sphere there so that I could collective brutality away the Dovin's veto. Oh well, we're just duressing. Worst case, we just take the verdict back. Alright, they drew another Dovin's Veto. A-OK. -okay. Have no issues with that. I would have actually taken that anyway. That just made it so I couldn't take Supreme Verdict, which... Eh, I guess they are tapping out anyway. And Godless Shrine was a draw for turn, so that means this Ashiok should resolve. And then I should be able to eat the yard, turning off Dig Through Time. And if they Detention Sphere Ashiok, again, perfectly okay with that. <laughs> this doesn't hit enchantments. I'm not really sure why opponent brought that in, but sure, you got it. Here I get to Oath of Kaya. This can only hit a creature though, right? No, three damage to any target. Do I save that for the hostage taker? I think I'm supposed to. So worst case scenario, I just anguished on making something at instep. No, that's fine. All right. So I'm gonna hit their blue source. This is technically three colors, so let's go that direction. I honestly don't care about getting the Ashiok back yet. I am putting a card in their yard, but it's not very high priority. And Plains fixes all of our colors with Urborg out. All right, that is a shambling vent. I know about a Verdict and a Hostage Taker in my opponent's hand. None of which are particularly exciting. Uh, opponent's definitely going to take the Obnixilis here. If they have a Dig Through Time in hand, they might take the Anguished Unmaking, but I have a couple of ways to deal with their yard, so I think I'm just letting this resolve. Yeah, I don't... Maybe they just thought we had more creatures because we showed them the minus off of Liliana. I, honestly, that's just more poor deck-building considerations out of me than anything else. Alright, that works. That can get hostage takered, but... The opponent's going to have to do something at some point. Draining for two and forcing a play from opponent seems fine for turn. Uh, they have to draw a land in order to play it, though. And if they do play it, I can just Murderous Rider it. Could also just see a verdict out of them. Just a clean verdict and plan to take a different creature. They do happen to know about this.
They know about our entire hand. All right, this looks like a dig through time. Nope, this is a pause and think about it. Do I want to do it with the Kemble? If all they're doing this turn is digging, it's going to drain for two, and I'm going to hit them for four, putting them down to 12, which is kind of a low life total, especially if I end up just going on Shambling Vent. I'm pretty far off of going off the of Shambling Vent unless I just draw a Thoughtseize, though. I want to have seven mana so I can cast one of my three drops. All right, they're going for it. So they potentially have a Dovin's Veto. Land? Not a land, but a good card for us. Let's go ahead and just kill this guy. Guess we'll see if opponent actually has the removal. Guess not. Seems like a weird play, but you got it. Uh, Erebos is in here because it functions pretty similarly to the Black Blood, Argul's Bloodfast, I think was the name of the standard card. Uh, for four mana, it's just a 5-7 indestructible creature, but I can also pay two and draw a card. <laughs> Alright, uh, drain two, get rid of my Anguish done making. Deal. Erebos was like a weird card for this deck. I could be running the Argyle's Bloodfast itself that turns into a land, but I figured having a 5-7 indestructible creature is kind of a fringe case. And costing 4 is alright. Plus it also makes it set my opponents can't gain life as a static effect, which if I end up having to raise something like Approach of the Second Sun felt relevant. Also shuts off lifelink. Uh, some of the heroic decks were running lifelink. All right, opponent, you're going to Supreme Verdict away the chem ball Because that's probably a pre-combat step. I'm really getting the read that they have the dig through time. All right, new Ashiok. So let's check for removal here. I think opponent took out a lot of their fatal pushes. Okay. This could also just be a Dovin's Veto, but discard target, counter spell, and lose two life is perfectly fine. If they have the dig, they're going to push it here so that I don't get the opportunity to eat their yard, although it's more correct to wait for the minus if they have the dig, unless they're digging for a veto. Yep, there we go. Protected through Spell Pierce, but that's about it. Uh, Mystical Dispute is a consideration. It'd just be blue counter unless they pay three. All right, well... Slightly slow out of opponent, but we are ahead on board, so they got to think through their lines. And they found the Miskal Dispute. Or... Didn't? Three, six... <sighs> they shouldn't be able to... Yeah, I think I have to mill here, because if they drew into a second dig through time, they need this one in the yard. <laughs> Hit the Aetherling and two Teferis. Feels pretty good, man. <laughs> Alright, that dig through time was terrible for them. So, Shambling Vent likely just attacking next turn. I could also see the Supreme Verdict here just get Kemble off the table. Uh, if they wait on the Supreme Verdict, the Shambling Vent and the Kemble hitting them should actually close the game out. I don't know what's happening. Okay, so look like they're afraid of the card draw, but like 
They have to answer Kemball and the Shambling Vent this turn, or they're just dead on board. Meanwhile, I have their graveyard shut down. Their Aetherling is in the yard. It is in exile. I actually don't think there's much coming back from this. Two of the Teferis are done. So, like, I get instant speed removal. Yeah, I think we might have just hit garbage time here. But let opponent think through it. Overall, we didn't do much here. Uh, we basically just let opponent thought seize and attack with a Kemball. Yep, they're done. I suppose that's the end of that. We can take a look at the deck list. Uh, I know I made some greedy decisions here. Like Erebos and Kalitas both seem like they're going to be a little meh. But, and <laughs> Elder Spell is beyond greedy. <laughs> Oh my god, I just want to hit an Oko with it and then ult a Planeswalker. That's all I'm really hoping for out of that. But it does feel like somewhat viable removal. There's a lot of Planeswalkers going around, especially between Oko and the Sahili Ducks. Uh, this is a Chalked Removal Hand. We're on the draw, so we get drawn to some gas. Yeah, I'm good with it. I mean, worst case, we'll not be playing against a creature matchup, and we can't activate castle locks locked lane i'm just gonna call it death star okay green typically means creature matchup green typically also means oko but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it carry added all right that's slightly awkward <sighs> sure we'll lead out our nice little lore wind swamp here this is Bant, assuming it's four color copycat. Ooh, it's Arcades. It's the Fender deck. That is amazing. So, uh, Arcades, for those of you that aren't familiar, defenders can attack, and each creature assigns damage equal to its toughness instead of its life. So, Castle Lockling can come in untapped. I know I'm going to be decking. Nothing else is really that important at the moment, so. Sure, let's do this. And unfortunately, Deck and Stone being sorcery speed makes me a sad panda, but Arcade's down. Uh, opponent's deck is going to be very dependent on this or Assault Formation. So I suppose we'll see if they draw into Assault Formation. Likely going to be running out Field of Rune next turn instead of Sorin, just so I can get an additional card in the yard for an instant speed murderous cut. Uh, actually, no, we want Kalidus out. Kalitas, Kalidus. This dude's going to make it so that if I kill any of their walls, then I get zombie tokens. And they also get exiled in case they're on Treasure Cruiser Dig Through Time, which if they're blue, they should be. Alright, that's another carry added, not an Arcades. This looks like another wall. X-Bane Guardian. So this dude will generate a lot of mana for them, but it looks like they ran out of gas, so we're probably okay. Here, uh, Field of Ruin, have up three mana, two cards in the yard for Murderous Cut, seems fine. The Lily Last Hope doesn't really accomplish much. Soren, on the other hand, can give my Kalitas plus one plus one and lifelink. I think I'm going to go to close this game out. Because my opponent can actually win with essentially a combo kill here, so I'm going to start making them sack, assuming that they don't find a way to attack. I'm going to put a real clock on them, gain some life so I'm out of range. Because like if they slam a Kalitas here, or sorry, an Arcades or an Assault Formation, I'm looking at 7, 10, 13, 17 damage. Watley. Okay, that's bad. Each creature assigns damage, and they gain life, so they get a hit pretty hard here. I guess we'll see if they go after Sorn or not. Uh, oh, they can't attack yet. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> oh, we're gonna do it! <laughs> I'm so happy! <laughs> Alright, we kill that one. Verb on this straight. Any number of planeswalkers, then choose a planeswalker. Okay, perfect. 
Guys, we did it! Now we have the emblem! <laughs> uh, I'm so happy! Take out their mana. And I'm staying on defense now. It's safe enough for me to stay on defense. I'm going to be throwing a zombie in front of something. I've got the murder's cut coming up next turn. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> okay, there's the assault formation. So they can make a creature a defender attack, but I have three blockers. All right, they're going for it. They're attacking with Wall of Mulch. And probably a carry added. Yeah, they realize it's over. With no cards in hand, me being able to jump block both of their creatures, untap and wreck them, we're good. Settle the wreckage comes in. Anguished on making can answer a Huatli, an Assault Formation, or an Arcades. <sighs> Pithy Needle could name Assault Formation. I don't think that's good enough. So we have Thoughtseize to take away their combo piece. They probably care about their yard, but... We have Kaya's, it's probably good enough. Gideon of the Trials is also probably slow, but he's fine. Oath of Gideon will give us some chump blockers. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to do that again. That made my night, but we're not going to be able to do that again. <laughs> I mean, Huatli's a combo piece. It's not like they're going to cut it, but I don't think we're going to be able to do it again. <laughs> Okay, this hand doesn't actually accomplish anything, so if they end up putting out a couple of walls and then an Arcades on four, I just die before I can fumigate, and they'll sack something ridiculous to the Oath of Liliana. We actually have a lot of lands in our deck, so I'm going to look for something a little bit better. Yeah, Thoughtseize isn't good enough here. Alright, we're going to five. And it's not great, but it's good enough. So Oath of Gideon is probably the worst card here, followed by the Thought Seize. We at least get a Thought Seize on two. Hopefully we draw Swamp. All right, and opponent's going to be a little slow themselves. Uh, Liliana was actually probably the cut there. All right, they have a carry added. Let's see if we can snag an Arcades before it's a problem. Uh, consulate. Okay, well, this draws a card. So it gets to be that. And sorry, I need to update our record. We did win versus Esper Control. And we're currently up a game versus Walls. Because we Elder Spelled. Oh. That's awesome. Oh, boy. That makes me sad. So I want Murderer's Cut for an instant speed on our Katie's. So I think I'm just going to try to whittle their... Actually, this draws them into one of their cards. Yeah, I, I can't make that decision. I, I can't path and let them cantrip into something that can end the game for them. All right. This has won me many a games of Commander. Inner Planner Beacon. Yeah, we have to go for Lily. Lily is going to be our clock here. And then we can just hold up Anguished Unmaking and Murderer's Cut for the future. We're going to shrink that guy because they're likely going to give their creatures haste if they can actually attack this turn. So may as well just make this a 3 instead of a 4. x -Bank Guardian is some life. Alright, let's keep it up. We're protected from two top decks at the moment, though, so I'm feeling fairly secure, given the fact that we have a clock coming and we have answers. Gideon of the Trials. Um, yeah. He doesn't do enough. We're just looking to stop Assault Formation, Arcades. All right, there's a deck in stone. They don't have any redundant creatures. I think we're just going to keep it up and try to ult Lily next turn. Super exciting game staring down some walls. Card to the bottom. 
Thought Seize doesn't really accomplish anything. This actively turns on Murder's Cut, which is better for Arcadee, so we can save Anguish on making for a Planeswalker. And then I have to discard, so it's going to be Elspeth. Just too expensive. Elspeth probably also could have been a cut because she costs 6 mana and doesn't actually wrath their board. Card to the bottom. Still, none of their combo pieces. Turn to another opt and another card to the bottom. Arboreal Grazer. Seems fine. It doesn't have Defender, but any of their things that make them assign based off toughness is good. Urborg. Okay, so what does that actually turn on? It turns on Thoughtseize. I don't really think that matters. I can do something for two mana, though. That's a deck in stone, and they'll just be able to draw a card off of that. So, all right, we're passing. Not attacking here because they obviously have a ton of walls. But Lily's Emblem is going to be able to close out a game, hopefully. All right, opponent drew a land. Godless Shrine, beautiful. All right, that actually turns on our four drops. So let's cast... No, it doesn't. I need one more land. It does turn on our three drops, though. So white, black, white. Gideon of the Trials. They have seven blockers, so next turn we'll be able to attack. Gideon's Emblem's going to at least send a decent chunk of damage over to him. And then we have Murderous Cut Up and Chump Blockers for uh, Assault Formation. Alright, Opt to the bottom. Alright, there's an Arcades. So, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, draw a card, and each creature assigns toughness equal, assigns damage equal to its toughness. So, I'm letting an opponent attack here before I murderous cut Arcades, because then that means that they won't have any blockers, and I can just kill the opponent here. And boom goes the dynamite. All right, well, we won because of Lily Alt. I think that's the takeaway, isn't it? <laughs> we Elder Spelled into a Soren Ultimate, and then we ulted Lily. Like, uh, that's our deck gold fishing. Those are the types of games that we're going to win and actually enjoy. But, yeah, uh, I'm not sure if Erebos is a good fit. I really wanted a good card draw engine, and we don't really have anything like Bob or Phyrexian Arena in Pioneer. You do get things like Underworld Connections, I believe. But, and you get Bloodfast, Argyle's Bloodfast. Same effect as Erebos, but Erebos can actually be an indestructible creature, which felt relevant. I don't know. I can try to go into some more details over the card list, but I want to get a couple more games in before I make anything too decisive. And this hand is actually quite good. So Shambling Vent's going to come and play tap, so it's going to be our turn one. And then we can... Deck and stone if it's absolutely required. Not a bad call for the treasure cruises running around. Shambling vent, ship it back. This could be the green stompy deck with Avatar of the Resolute hardened scales. Uh, this could also be some weird taxes list that happened to draw two forests. Okay, so this is stompy. 100% decking that. Not taking that amount of damage next turn. Prefer to draw Swamp here, but if I don't, like, I still get Field of Ruin into deck. Alright, well, I am going to need a untapped land for next turn so I can Kaya Exile Dried Militant to keep some damage off. And unfortunately, all of our Exile effects are making it so that Kaya's not making us gain life. But, doing what we can to survive. Murderous Cut also looking a little awkward versus Dried Militant. I believe we have one of these in the list. Yeah, one Murderous Cut, and it just happened to be versus Dried Militant hand, but... 
All right, Swamp. Avatar of the Resolute. That's another six drop. All right. Uh, isolated Chapel taps for the most colors, so we'll send that back. I guess now we're looking for a Fumigate. Like, Swamp Fumigate is the land I want to live in. Worst case, though, I get a Kaya, get rid of the Dryad Militant, send three damage over to Kaya. Not having Fatal Pushes is feeling bad, but it was so hard to enable with um, without Revolt. Okay, so Interplanter Beacon comes in untapped. I can make a 2-2. Two -two. This won't grow anymore, but it does have Trample, so I can make a 2-2 two -two and block either of these guys. Then they have to send f just 2 damage at it. So Alpha at Sorin, he dies. I think I want to enter Planner here, and most efficient use of mana is Sorin. Plus, I think I want Kaya long-term, so let's do that. The lifelink isn't actually super relevant in the stack off of Soren. He's in here for his ultimate and the fact that he can create a chump blocker for a turn. It's not like we have lingering souls to take full advantage of him. So if he bites the bullet now and then I can protect Kaya, that's okay. But they're going to have to send five at Soren. I just let it go, then untap Kaya, eat the Dryad Milton. Odds are they have the Domri Raid fight spell. This is Giant Growth at Sorcery, right? Yep. So they might actually just Giant Growth the Avatar and kill Soren that way. I'm assuming five lands is a lot for their deck. I am also expecting a Galt to come, to come down before too long. Questing Beast. Lovely. So, Death Touch, Haste, can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. So, they get to send everything at me and kill Soren because this Questing Beast is going to go unblocked. They also left up green. I'm trying to get the read of what that should be for. Yep, that's going to hit me and kill Soren. So, I suppose we just block the Avatar to get it out of the way. Since it has Trample, and Kai is going to kill the Dryad Militant. Yep, we go to 5. This is not Happy Magic Christmas Land. Also quite concerned about why they left up green here. Okay, so I can not castle lock lane, so I have four mana to play with. That can be Murder's Cut on Quisting Beast and Thoughtseize. Not happy Thoughtseize in here. Especially because they'll just kill us. Actually, I think we're just dead. So I, Kaya, go up to six. They just giant growth the Questing Beast and I'm out. I can gain two life by plussing, but that doesn't really accomplish anything. So they'll just giant growth and hit me for seven. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so murderous cut here is, I think, my only actual line. Yeah, they just giant growth that. We're going to go out getting some knowledge here. Actually, block with shambling vent. What does Block with Shambling Vent give me? Can't block the Questing Beast, still die. Okay, yeah, we're going to get some knowledge on the way out. They're holding up green for something. I want to see what that is. Okay, so it was Blossoming Defense. Good to know. What else you got? Boon Seder. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, we're done here. Okay. Creature Beats. We need things for Creature Beats. Authority of the Consoles will make it so that Questing Beast loses haste. Not ideal, but probably where we're at. Collective Brutality will kill some of their smaller creatures. Oath of Gideon is probably kind of bad here. Settle the Wreckage is an additional board clear. Elspeth will clear a lot of the creatures out of the way. Obnixilus is bad because he costs life and 
Draws cards, honestly not where we want to be at. Same with Erebos. Murderous Rider is probably a necessary evil, plus the 2-3 from what I saw out of opponent's deck looks relevant. Oath of Kaya is also a removal spell. Opponent's Graveyard probably doesn't matter. I'm assuming they have Hooting Mandrels, but that's about it, and I don't need to bring in a card to counter that. Gideon of the Trials can prevent damage, which feels relevant. They're not going to have many Planeswalkers. I could see them having Garuk, Garrick, whatever his name is. Uh, but I, I have other things I can do. That's looking kind of ideal. Anguished on making could be a consideration. I don't like losing the three life versus the aggro deck though. Oh boy, this is disgusting that this looks good. But I get deck and stone on their one drop or two drop and I get oath of Kaya to remove whatever comes up after. Yeah, I think we're keeping this. Hoping not to stop deck too many lands. It should leave 19 lands left in our deck. And opponent is currently at 6 cards. Uh, Settle the Wreckage also quite nicely gets around the fact that they have Blossoming Defense. I'm actually curious. Uh, I'm going to be looking up Hexproof and another window. Alright, we get... Oh, Fumigate, beautiful. We even have the lands for it. You go away. I honestly don't care about the graveyard stuff, but the 2-1 is not good. Okay, color green, format, pioneer, oracle text, hexproof. Minus is permanent. So we get Blinding Fog, Heroic Intervention, Patra's, Mark, Vell of Summer. Okay, they have a lot of one-drops I can give Hexproof. We just have to assume that they've got it. Uh, that's beautiful. Like, I absolutely love that. Castle Lockling's going to enter untapped. Eh, so is Isolated Chapel. That's a little bit better. Oath of Kaya is going to be our friendly little neighborhood. Destroy your Bark Troll. They can't make it Hexproof now, which is perfect timing. We'll gain three life. I am really enjoying this card tonight. It's also going to make attacking our Planeswalkers so bad. <laughs> Alright, three mana expecting the 5-4. Yorvo. Alright, it's a 4-4. Four, four, and it grows. Well, I'm not going to activate Castle Lock Lane here, so it's going to be a tapped Godless Shrine. If opponent runs out the desert, we'll Field of Ruin it just to get a card out of our deck since we've seen a lot of lands. But with Fumigate incoming and Elspeth after that, I'm feeling fairly confident from where we're at. The Activate as a Sorcery makes it significantly worse than I want it to be. Alright, yep, that's going to grow Yorvo. And then this is one of the few stops that I really, really missed when I first started playing Arena. I've heard that they've re-added it, but this in combat step is going to make it so that they can't use their mana on a buff spell, but they also don't get a cheese it at end step or during their second main phase. So it's possible that they just crack their mana on the clue here and then they can't invest anything else out for turn. They could also have Heroic Intervention and put us down a land. That'd actually be quite bad at the moment. But, like, if they have three mana, they're stuck doing an end of combat, so they can't buff and crack the clue or anything along those lines. I guess this leaves them with one mana. If they had a Dryad Militant, they could run it out there. All right, four cards in hand. Do I want to take the hit for seven? Not exactly. So I suppose we're just going to fumigate. Uh, it's only a two for one, but it's a happy two for one. Also, hitting their land at instep meant that they couldn't just leave up the clue for my turn. So if they did have a heroic intervention there for indestructible, it wasn't going to do anything. 
experiment one. It's pretty good when it comes out on turn one. Kind of meh if it comes out later than that. All right, well, this doesn't get trample. That's kind of a nice draw. So I think Elspeth is going to come out and just minus. I don't think that they have anything that can deal with her, but I'd rather just be play safe and get rid of their cards. Because if Elspeth... Actually, no, Elspeth will die if she minuses. I guess we're going to be gambling in plus one. If they get trample, this goes very poorly. I wanted to be able to answer, answer this since we have Castle Lock Lane to start drawing cards. Like, Questing Beast here is kind of bad. Questing Beast can hit us without triggering the Oath of Kaya and still redirect it to Elspeth. Oh well. I'm likely running out everything in my hand next turn, so... Alright, that's not the best card around. Attacking me. Makes sense for the experiment one because it would die to the Oath of Kaya trigger. But Authority of the Consoles is going <laughs> to... I love this card. Uh, they can pay to make this hex proof. I think... <sighs> I really want to destroy this. But they're not going to be able to attack me through... Yeah, whatever. We're just plusing Elspeth. Buying time is fine as well. Just drawing more cards should be able to get us out of this. I believe we've stabilized at this point, so I'm not really going to force it. Authority of the Consoles is going to make it so that Questing Beast is bad. Castle Lock Lane is going to enter untapped. And then this is going to cost four lands. So we can't Oath of Kai here and Castle Lock Lane. They have to remove two 1-1 one -one counters, so I think I'm just committing for this now. We'll double up on the Oath of Kaya, remove the experiment one. They likely have a hexproof spell, but if they hexproof and then grow it, that means Elspeth can kill it next turn. Okay. That's actually really smart. That forces me to target something I control. So we'll keep this guy, and then I will shoot one of the new soldiers. Good play from opponent. Vell of Summer being one mana cryptic command is incredibly annoying. Alright, well, I suppose we'll see if they have something like the Progenitus Growth, whatever the plus seven plus seven trample aura was. They can also give this thing hexproof, so it's pretty safe to invest in this if it's something three mana. There's a steel leaf. Yep. And opponent has to attack here. Like, they just clear out the soldiers, but they can't let me grow critical soldiers down here. Yep, yep. Sarah Farron gets to grow probably experiment one. Honestly, it doesn't matter. This gets hexproof. This gets regenerate. They're both fairly safe bets. Mm. I'm going to do this and try to eat a pump spell out of them. The three feels pretty safe to lose at the moment. Then if Elspeth comes down, I'm in minuses. I can't imagine that opponent has a land and heroic intervention in hand. So I should just be able to eat most of their board. They get to regenerate this, but it'll just be a 1-1. One, one. Four or greater. I have not played with Elspeth enough recently. All right, let's draw. That's a thought seize. That's probably fine. That means Elspeth is dying, though. That was a horrible mistake. Yeah, let's take the buff spell out of their hand or the other Vel of Summer. Uh, 
Aspect of the Hydra. All right, well, we're not getting one shot. One plus side of Elspeth dying here is we're going to gain four life. Like, that's a terrible plus, but it is technically true. We also have eight lands. Like, can I just address the fact that we have eight lands out of 16 cards? Technically nine lands out of 16 cards. Collective Brutality. Not really what I was looking for here. Let's draw a card. If I hit another land, I actually might activate the Field of Ruin just to prevent the three damage. So, Murderous Rider. That's Destroy, so that actually doesn't accomplish what I want it to. I can Field of Ruin and Collective Brutality, but it would only be a Duress. Is that good enough? No, what I'm supposed to do is Murderous Rider on the Troll. I'll lose the Murderous Rider, but it'll be a 2-2. Then I can kill it with Collective Brutality next turn. So, yeah, I think we're just shipping it back for the moment. If they draw Aspect of the Hydra, we're looking at 12 damage this turn, though. Actually, I'm going to hit this because then it doesn't get countered and then I can still collect a Brutality yet. I lose the 2 life, but I think having the 2-3 lifelinker back and still being able to kill the experiment one seems good enough where this can be answered by a couple of different things. I'm not 100% on that play, but I think it is the most correct. Okay, that's an Avatar of the Resolute. So that was actually good. It did remove counters from the other thing. Oh boy. Four, eight. So I get to cast this and settle. I cast this, Field of Ruin, then settle. Yep, seems right. The one card in hand, this goes poorly if they have... I don't think it goes poorly if they have anything. Hey, let's just cast this. Actually, it does go poorly if they have Heroic Intervention, because their permanents will get Hexproof, and it would actually counter the Field of Ruin, which is relevant at the moment, so I'm probably not going to field here. Yeah, Murderous Rider seems pretty decent. The one downside here is it might keep Experiment 1 back. I've also been playing a little sloppy. The Castle Lock Lane, me not activating it during my turn, is telling the opponent that I have something here. Although, it looks like they're just going for it. Yep, Trampled Dude gets plus three, plus three. And then I'm going to settle first just in case I do actually... Oh, good lord. I can only cast that on Planeswalkers. So taking 10 here, and if they have Aspect of the Hydra, I'm screwed. Why did I tap my White Source? That is horrible, horrible sequencing. All right, well, Aspect of the Hydra is going to get plus 5, plus 5. So if I block this and they give this plus 5, plus 5, I'm still just dead. No, lifelink's fine. Lifelink will keep me alive. So let's do this. Yeah, why did I tap Goblet Shrines before Colorless Sources? Oh, nope, exactly dead. Oh my gosh, that is horrible. That is a punt. That is an absolute horrible punt. In fact, I'm giving it to myself because that is beyond loss-worthy. I actually think that, that is a fine matchup because we come stocked with enough removal that we should have no issues winning that. Why did we lose the first match? I feel like I knew that. I don't know. 
mildly distracted. All right. Um, we moved to 2-1, and I'm not happy about that one, but try not to get tilted and move on. This is a deck in stone, Field of Ruin. I have an Elder Spell if this is an Oko matchup and a Fumigate. It's not amazing, but I have answers, and I stall into a late game. If this is a creature matchup, I'm happy. If it's Planeswalkers, I kind of get some options. Once Upon a Time probably means a copycat deck, just from the way that the format's shaping out. Could also be Elves. Elves would be fun. This hand lines up really well for Elves. Okay, looking like Mono Green. Although that could mean just about anything. It's looking like Elves. So expecting a Coco next turn? The other deck in stone. If they're running Hooglin's list for Elves, they have two Mystics and two Llanowar Elves. I think I just need to stall a little bit here. I'm going to try to take the Llanowar Elves out. They can crack the clue if they want to, but I'm just trying to buy time up until the point that I can Fumigate. This could be Mono Green Sahili. I have seen it before. Walking Ballista likely means Hardened Scales. It's Green Devotion, so it's probably going to be similar to the opponent's last list. Just a little bit more top-heavy. Opponent's list also looked mildly budget. Walking Ballista is not going to be on the budget end. Walking Ballista for two. Medium payoff. Uh, deck and Stone on this is going to be nice because they can only ping us for one and then they're going to keep their clue. So, run it back. Yep. Exactly what I was expecting out of opponent. Then we're set up for a Deck and Stone on their next bomb and then we can fumigate away their mana dorks. Oh, is this 8 whack? I don't know what's going on. Burning Tree Emissary and Sylvan Carry added are very different cards. Uh, this is just Green Devotion, though. I do remember seeing the splashing towards the end of the Theros block. Because, yeah, Nykthos is currently giving them 5 mana. And there's a Walking Ballista for 3. Guess what, opponent? I had Deck and Stone Tron. And I'm also hitting Nykthos now because it's relevant. Doing it last turn wouldn't have made any sense, but now that I get to actually hit Nykthos and Deck and Stone, 100% the right call. All right. I can see opponent running it back to shoot me for two, cash out their clue. Then they should have three cards in hand, potentially a couple of cheap one-drops, and we might be keeping them off their payoff for the moment. I'm assuming their payoff is either Polychronos or Ulamog. Maybe Emrakul. Okay, I need a land. I don't ask for much deck, but I want a land. For realsies. The fourth deck in stone. Alright, well, blocker. Go ahead. Really concerned about the two cards in hand. They have all the mana that they need here. Although right now it's nine. <laughs> all right. Um, they could technically have Den Protector, but I don't think that the... Oh my gosh. Uh, I think I have to deck the Walking Ballista. They just have too much mana. This is the weirdest game I have played in a long time. And earlier tonight, I ulted both Soren and Liliana. <laughs> and they found another Nykthos. Oh, they've got the dual deck Vivian. Or, no, that's the M19 Vivian. Okay, so expecting some big bomb to come. And am I dead? 2 one, one counters, that's 7 damage. Yep, I'm dead. Wow, that is heart-wrenching. That is so heart-wrenching. 
Okay, settle the wreckage, big. Anguished on making, big. Authority of the consoles, maybe not so big. That doesn't actually do anything versus the mana dorks. Uh, collective brutality can kill a dork, especially on the play, feels relevant. Elder spell, I'm assuming that they have potentially both Nissa's and that Vivian that they showed me. I don't think Kimball's worth it. That was just such a weird game. Uh, I could see Pithy Needles for the Walking Blista and Nykthos. This is non-land mana abilities. So yeah, we can name Nykthos with that. Ooh, Oath of Gideon's bad. Oath of Liliana's bad because they just have so many dorks they're never going to be able to sack the good creature. We actually saw that at the end of the last game. Murderous Cut still seems fine, although I'm really concerned that their payoffs are indestructible, which is why I wanted the Anguish done making. I probably should have actually made that consideration when I said it. The Murderous Riders feel a little bit slow. Liliana Last Hope feels great here. Getting into the Trials is probably bad. Because like they can activate Walking Ballista between our plus ones, and he's just slow. 4-4 four, four clock isn't fast enough. Um... Deck and Stone's kind of medium, but I feel like it's a requirement here. Erebos might be bad, and maybe just an Elspeth. We, we messed with our curve a bit. And she can't kill all the little dorks with her minus. All right, this is at least a double Thoughtsy's hand. If I draw an additional land, we have Liliana and Kaya, both all-stars in this format. We're going to be keeping this hand. Hopefully we don't spend this entire match just staring at our opponent like we did last match, but let's see. It's also possible that this is the black version of Bolt the Bird. If they're reliant on a single mana dork, we can take it here. A little surprise. Yeah, I understand why they didn't fire that off in response. All right, well, Walking Bliss is going to be the biggest problem for us. We can snag Vivian next turn, then they'll just have a moderate amount of mana, but no payoffs. We are going to be putting ourselves to 14, though. Definitely consideration here. So I think Ripping Godless Shrine is going to be our best top deck. Then we can just put it into play Tapped and Thoughtseize again. Happy with any lands, though. There's a Nulamog. Definitely going to eat that. Shambling Vent was better than Godless Shrine. Thank you, deck. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, they drew a walking ballista for turn. <laughs> All right, walking ballista it is. They should only have three mana next turn though. So there's the forest. This is gonna be okay. Burning tree into Sylvan carry added, and then we know that they have a Vivian coming down next turn. And I got a Thought Seize. Does that change anything? Do I care about this enough? I Thought Seize this, then opponent only has an Ulamog that can't cast. Versus eat their mana dork, they don't top deck a land, they still have Vivian in hand, and then next turn hopefully Thought Seize and Kaya. Uh, do I get greedy here? Them growing their creatures out of Liliana is a problem. So I think I'm, I have to take this. This is probably the correct call here. Taking Vivian's just going to make it so that they can't grow their dorks out of Lily. Then I don't know what opponent would have in their yard. Ashiok probably was supposed to come out. If we go to game three, I'll probably trim Ashiok's. At least bring back in Elspeth. All right, then, eat the Land of War Elves. <laughs> I hate one mana cryptic command so much. <sighs> All right, Devotion's just going back up. This can find them a Nykthos. Or just a land. Like, honestly, they are kind of struggling for lands. So they have Ulamog and one unknown. This Lily's going to gain us a lot of life, though. Additional land is fine. Eat the land of war elves. I'm still expecting them to hit Kaya. 
or Liliana. So I'm just going to run out the Kaya and try to gain some life. We are technically at nine, which is kind of dangerous territory. I could also see them like taking Oath of Nyssa. I can't be sure that they don't have non-green Planeswalkers. But let's eat those two guys. Then they should attack Lily. I can run out my next Lily and hopefully be stabilized. Like, Ulamog in hand is never a safe spot to be in, but that ah, generates a lot of mana. It also grows their creatures. Now, because of Leyline of Abundance, Lily's not going to shrink the Burning Tree. That That's fine. Okay, I was going to say that couldn't shrink the burning trees enough that they can't actually hit my planeswalkers, but it should be slow enough that it's not a problem at this point. So we can get rid of Walking Blista and Once Upon a Time, gain some life back, and we're actually at a healthy 15 given the fact that we shocked and triple thought seized. Shambling Vent's also going to be a really good blocker. But I don't have a strong answer to this Ulamog. All right, there's an additional forest. They need eight mana here, so they are a little ways off that, too. All right, then. Come on, planeswalkers. Ooh, Settle the Wreckage feels quite strong. So, Lanowar Elves, the Vel of Summer. Shrinky Dink you. Then I'm running out the Ashok partially just to gain the life and partially to just be out, make efficient use of my mana. I don't actually want to shrink their yard yet because Kaya is shrinking it. But when they don't have a yard, I will start activating it so that Kaya actually becomes a real clock. Okay, they are one turn away from activating Self and Carry Added now. <laughs> uh, sometimes it just works out. Okay, so let's eat that. We can mill. They're up to 11, so we're getting a little bit closer to killing them. We'll Shrinky Dink you. Oath of Kaya. Hit Burning Tree. And then they're going to be looking pretty hard for an answer at this point. It's just going to be the Ulamog. And then we have the Settle in hand. Okay, they have 9 mana. That actually helps a lot. So let's eat this, gain some life. Mill over it. No legal targets. Then if Ulamog comes down, I, I can't fumigate. I don't have enough life, and this has hexproof, so I can't deck and stone it. If Ulamog comes down then I have to assume Kaya and Lily are going. At which point I just deck and stone it and we pick up where we left off at. Okay, they found a forest. Here comes Beefy Daddy. Was pretty close to ulting some planeswalkers, but... Sadness ensues. All right. Eat that. Uh, I don't have much incentive to mill now. Eh, Sylvan Carry Added can't attack. I guess we'll try to take some win conditions out of their deck. I am going to leave Ashok at one counter, though, so that they can't search. And also, did I trim Elder Spell? I did. Well, not searching feels viable. There's another Kaya. All right, well, I guess that's another reason. Opponent has a lot of mana, though, so trying to fade another finisher out of them. Ulamog's a nasty boy, though. I don't have much incentive to mill myself here, so tick up, and hopefully two turns, opponent will die. It is correct of them to keep growing the carry added. It's a lot of clicks for MTGO, but it is their line. It also protects in case I have the 
detention beacon or whatever it's called. Urborg. Eh, it doesn't help them, but it is our fifth mana, so we can actually get rid of the mana dorks. That feels relevant enough. Then we can... Just gonna eat... Ah, our life total's high enough. Eating both. And then opponent's dead here if they didn't top deck. Oh, they get to grow a land. What does ulting the previous Kaya actually accomplish for me, though? Because I only have Murderous Rider. I guess Shambling Vents could have been attacking, but they had a carry added. Ulting would have knocked them down 14 points, I believe, was the last turn I could have ulted. Yeah, that's pretty bad for me. Murderous Rider gets to kill that and come down, though. Kaya did survive. Okay, that land is actually pretty good, because the Murderous Rider would have been able to kill this, but then it just would have been able to die. Um, yeah, nothing there. I could hold up Settle the Wreckage, but I'm going to go for the Swift End on this guy, and then we'll run out Murderous Rider as a Chump Blocker. Or the next land. It doesn't get flying, does it? Yeah, just Vigilance and Haste. We really don't win this much by Creature Beats. <laughs> All right, opponent just found a Llanowar Elves as the best card out of their top five with 17 cards in deck. I think Ashiok actually might need to mill here. They shouldn't have any search effects. Yeah, I, I think Ashiok's milling here just to put them down to 12 cards. They do get to grow their creatures a little bit, but it's not enough. Like, we're just going to chump block here. We have Settle the Wreckage up, and we're going to be gaining life anytime they try to take down our Planeswalkers, which we're going to have multiple turns for. In fact, that two points might kill this forest. Wait, why did it not take damage? Deals two damage to that player. Okay. Oh, perfect timing. Oh, I need to land, though. Found Vivian and Nyssa. So I was right about the Planeswalkers there. Plus, no targets. Then we get a Settle. Hopefully get rid of an additional land of theirs. Untap, cast Ashiok. Mill for four more. And, like, even this minus eight. When they get to pull it off, they're only going to get a couple of lands. They do get Indestructible, which is mildly inconvenient, but... That uh, ultimate's not going to win the game for them. <sighs> Alright, might be getting the mill kill here. I mean, I knew it was a possibility, but I didn't think I'd actually be doing it. Field of Ruin would have also been a pretty decent top deck. Would have let us Ashiok, hit a land, or settle. <laughs> I found another ley line. <laughs> They have so much mana. Oh, did they find Ulamog? Oh, they're just going to grow a bunch. Makes sense. Yep, multiple counters. Am I actually supposed to let Kaya die here? No, because if I don't top deck a land, then I can't Ashiok and settle. All right, well, settle incoming. This is also going to go get the lands out of their deck, so the Nissa ultimate gets worse.
I if I'm opponent, I probably just fell to find. They don't know about the Ashok in hand, but Okay. Apparently no fell to find. They went and got them all. Pithy needle? Hey! <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So, Pithy Needle on Nyssa, they won't actually have anything to attack with this turn, and then they're dead to the mill. I could have also attacked a Shambling Vent, so I guess I didn't need the Pithy Needle, but this is going to be Nyssa who shakes the earth. Or world. We'll plus Kaya just for completion's sake. And then they need a Questing Beast here. Even that's not really good enough. Yep. Alright. Well, took game two there. I do think we should have been able to take game one. Does anything actually change? I mean, we technically milled them with Ashiok, but I don't think that's correct. Uh, they had Once Upon a Time, Planeswalkers. I don't think Kemball's good enough in this situation. Oath of Liliana is still only going to kill their little creatures. Oath of Gideon doesn't really accomplish anything. This is destroy all creatures with power four or greater, so they have to start growing their lands before that's relevant. I think Elder Spell comes back in because they actually did show us like four different Planeswalkers, the two different Nissas and two different Vivians. That was quite the game. Oh, I just took a drink of my drink and I forgot that it was Surge instead of Coke and that was quite the palate taste. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be on the play here. I think we can't keep this. Like this is only a thought Thoughtseize. It doesn't do much. Oh my gosh. This is awful. This is so bad. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully they're on a slower hand themselves. Uh, I don't think Interplanter Beacon. It did save us last game, but we ended up starting getting more life from the Oath of Kaya than anything else. And Pithy Needle here could name Walking Ballista. I don't think that's relevant versus Lily killing their creatures. It could be the Murderous Rider, but I like being able to destroy their Planeswalker since we don't have Discard. Uh, the mold of five here feels awful. Opponent also kept their seven. And they have the ley line. Eek. Pithy Needle can't name any of their one mana dorks. Alright, well, we're going to lead on planes. Uh, the black shouldn't help them. We did see almost all of their deck, but... Castle Lock Lane is going to come in off of Urborg untap, so we get a deck on two, and... Or we don't. They have a carry added. I suppose that works too. That is actually fine. Let's take a peek at what you're trying to get done here. So I can name Walking Ballista. I can't really answer the Ulamog. So I think this time around we are going to take the Ulamog. They can only Walking Ballista on two and I can Pithy Needle it. Or they might run out both and I can Deck and Stone both of them. I think game one, the problem was I had the four deck and stones, and they drew the three walking ballistas, and I never waited to try to two for one. But who knew they were going to draw three walking ballistas game one? Yep, you got it, opponent. So walking ballista on two. Do I trade out? Yes, I 100% trade out Lily here. So, likely what's going to happen is opponent's going to run out the other walking ballista for two, and they're going to attack in for two, ping with each of them to finish off Lily, and then I can deck and stone both of them, and Pithy Needle probably the ley line. Honestly, this is the most annoying thing I've seen out of them. Nykthos isn't really generating much mana at the moment. Yeah, I suppose that's fine too. They do get a finish off Lily. If we get a land, we get Pithy Needle and another Lily. They'd only be able to attack for one with the Walking Blista. Oh, perfect. Deck, I love you. I really do. You have been kind to me this game. Okay, no more activations from Walking Blista. Leyline could be a consideration, but hopefully I'm going to be able to answer that soon. Or actually just close out the game with the Liliana. But now they're going to have to run out the other Walking Ballista just to put a clock up. Then Deccan Stone's taking both of them. It would be nice to have a Teferi to bounce a Pithy Needle after everything's said and done, though. 
Or just bounce the ley line. Set him back a full turn. Oh, yes. I'm getting the tinglys. That, that's awesome. That's amazing. Then I can activate my murderous cut with the deck going to the yard. So I think we're just going for Lily's ultimate here. Yep, opponents draw on their clues. They are going to have a lot of mana, though. Like, I'm not out of the woods yet, but Lily about like applying pressure is good. All right, another ley line. So they can Ulamog if they found another one. Planes. Not exactly what I was looking for, but that allows me to activate Castle Lock Lane. So I need to find a way to get a card into the yard in order to Lock Lane and Murderous Cut. So I think I'm waiting until end step. This one Murderous Cut makes me wish I put my Fabled Passages in this deck. I think I put two in, but I haven't seen them yet. Nope, I trimmed them all. But this is just a single love. It's probably fine without it. I really just didn't want to give opposing death rights food. Okay, cracking clues. So they still don't really have anything yet. Okay, that's a land war elves. It's going to be tapping for three mana, so that's likely going to eat the murderous cut. Oh no, Lily's going to eat that. What am I saying? We're drawing with lock lane. Isolated Chapel. Not amazing, but fine. Oh, that's less than good. This kills the Llanowar Elves. Oh, they're going to grow it. Don't Vel of Summer me, bro. Don't do it. I can't have this stick around, otherwise it's going to be able to do something to Lily. All right, perfect. Now I get to activate Lachlan at instep and hopefully just have the Lily ultimate. Okay, sweet. Once upon a time, actually they get five off of Nykthos. Sweet, ulting Lily. They're gonna have a big walking ballista, but I'm gonna be looking at three cards. And honestly, I'm going to have infinite chump blockers for it since it can't ping things. Oh, my bad. I thought I mapped it correctly. They could cast a Nulamog if they had it. All right, Walkie B. You're big. I actually suppose it doesn't matter because the planes go tap for black. Oh, that's an anguished unmaking. That's beautiful. Oh, and that's an Obnixilis Reignited. Oh, I love this deck. I really do. Ah, W does not work fast enough. Then we're going to destroy that. Then I have an Anguished Unmaking set up if they ever do find their way to an Ulamog, and I believe we've locked up the game. It'd be nice to find a repeatable source of life gain. But when I can draw multiple cards a turn, I honestly think we're out of this. Uh, Shambling Vents is fine. Let's draw first, see what we get. Drawing there means I'm not activating Lock Lane because there's just too many cards. I could activate it beforehand, but if I top deck a six mana Planeswalker, I can't run it out. Then attacking with zombies there, they both would have just died. We're going to build up a somewhat critical mass before we commit. Like, if opponent finds Emrakul, which I didn't see the first time that we milled them out, then I could see them controlling us and making us lose enough life that we can't win the game. But I'm likely going to start running these Shambling Vents out just to hit for two and gain two if I don't find an Oath of Kaya in the near future. I 
Oh, and there's an Elspeth. Beautiful. All right, well, let's draw an additional card. God, the Shrine doesn't really mean a whole lot. I could see Elspething post-combat if opponent actually activates Leyline during combat, which doesn't seem likely, but I'm going to be hitting for 8 here, so opponent's dead next turn. Alright, well, with Lily's emblem out, I'm honestly not too concerned with this, so... Let's just run out Elspeth. We'll plus for a couple of chump blockers, and then now opponent can't actually activate their ley line, which puts them even further behind. Or they can, their creatures are going to die though. Yeah, not a huge fan of that line. I guess activating there just puts Burning Tree in the danger zone, and then they leave carry added. Yeah, that closed it out. Whew, that was a fun one. That was a really fun one. All right, well, move up to 3-1, which means that we're at least somewhat viable. Decks like this always seem to be viable. It's just whether or not the board clears have text, and we're even running a little light on board clears, but that last game we mulled to 5. We still ulted a Lily and had multiple card draw outlets when we ended up stalling out. I can't keep a single tap land, and this is slow but fine. We also have lock land to start refilling op post uh, mulligan. So being on the draw is a little bad here. I have to assume this is copycat. We haven't seen it yet. Running out the swamp doesn't tell opponent what our other color is, and it lets these come in untapped, so... Smartest play. That's a smuggler's copter. Alright. So, expecting to get hit by smuggler's copter next turn, then hopefully Oath of Kaya eats a creature... Alternatively, I leave up the Murderous Rider for the Smuggler's Copter. Okay, this might be value. This also might be Vanifair. Scry 2, two cards to the bottom. So they are looking for something and not finding it. Uh, Smuggler's Copter means it's a creature deck. It's probably more correct to leave up the Murderous Rider here, but I believe Oath of Kaya is going to make our future top decks better, so I'm going to eat the Charming Prince. If they don't have a cheap enough creature to follow up, then I'm not getting hit by the Smuggler's Copter, and I have a couple of different options there, so I think that's my correct line. So we'll Oath of Kaya, eat the Charming Prince, gain back a little bit of the life that we lost, and they're Naya... So, Copycat is still on the table. Value still on the table. I believe there's a Naya Zulus that 5 owed, but it didn't look very promising. It looked like it was probably just a couple of runs, and it ended up seeing a good finish. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Then we have Lock Lane. So, I'm not going to reveal Lock Lane yet. We are actually above cards from our opponent somehow. Probably because we were on the draw. And we mulliganed, but... Xenagos. Okay, so they are a full beatdown deck. This is going to give a creature haste and plus X plus X, but it's not a creature yet, so I don't care. I do need to find an answer for that before too long, though. Um... Okay, six mana. This could be a Carnage Tyrant. If it's a Carnage Tyrant, I can't really do anything about it. So I think I'm just going to Kaya here to gain a little bit of life. Potentially put a clock down for the opponent. Eat their yard in case they're on Hooting Mandrels. Just really, really freaking hope that they're not on <laughs> Carnage Tyrant. Because that's going to be 12 damage. Um, this is so much worse. This probably means they're an Ulamog deck. That's another Castle Lock Lane. So, I think I'm supposed to Ashiok and hold up Murderous Rider. I want Elspeth to come down and eat their creature in case it has evasion. This will also give me a better idea of what's in their deck. Show me what you got. I'm actually kind of curious at this point. Dubious Challenge, Tristani, Xenagos. Okay. So they are a combo deck. Um, plus no targets. 
And then I have Murderous Rider up. Tristani's tokens are going to be slightly annoying, but my Oath of Kai is going to protect my Planeswalkers. There's another Smuggler's Copter, so they just don't have any payoffs in their hand. Deck and Stone is fine, but a little slow. More Charming Princes. So I'm expecting this to just be a Pioneer version of Saffron Olive's deck. And if it is, then I'm probably safe to run out my Elspeth, just so I actually have a clock going. If Elspeth dies because of this line, I'm going to feel super silly, but I need to start actually representing something. Kai is going to ping them for 11 this turn, so my token should hopefully do some damage. Okay, and there's a Gideon. So Gideon's actually going to make it so I don't get one shot out of anywhere, which is nice. Uh, first things first, let's alt Kaya. Nope. Ashiok first. Duh. Hit for four more. World Spine Worm. Okay, so this is the Ilharg deck. Ilharg with Dubious Challenge. That's an interesting combination. But we'll hit you. They go down to five. We'll attack for three. And... I kind of want a Gideon just in case they have Ilharg World Spine Worm. They shouldn't be able to actually kill me at 37, but. Well, we'll be safe. There's no point in not being safe. Look at all those Planeswalkers, son. We may as well be on Facebook. We have so many friends. All right, that closed out the game. So, of note, they had a Fling, a Void Winnower. I love pumpkin spice. It's even coming back to that time of year that it's relevant again. Uh, they call this pumpkin spice because it can't even. It costs nine. It's an 11-9. Your opponents can't even. Yeah. Uh, but they have a bunch of fun ofs. Uh, really curious to see if they got matched up with us in the 3-1 bracket, though, because that's a little odd. Uh, Kemball could be a consideration. It blocks Charming Prince. Drains them any time that they dubious challenge. Xenagos is technically a creature, though. Anguish on Making's coming in, just as unconditional removal. Pithy Needle doesn't really stop anything. Authority of the Council stops all the hasty threats, though. Well, no copycat, but Authority of the Councils is going to do some work. Uh, Kalitas is probably slightly on the slow end. Erebos can help us find a win condition, but I think I'd rather just have stronger cards in my deck. Oath of Gideon slightly on the weak side. It speeds us up, but opponents either are going to kill us or Dirtle. Oath of Liliana might be bad. It's going to make them sack a Charming Prince, but Dubious Challenge's flaws in the fact that it doesn't give things haste, which is why opponents running Xenagos. I think Oath of Liliana might be considerable. The Elder Spell is bad. I didn't see any Planeswalkers out of them. It's probably our setup. Yeah, I mean... Nothing amazingly good. No uh, Graft Digger's Cages or anything like that, but... Wow. Deck. The triple Thoughtseize, but no mana to cast it. I'd pick our opponent apart, and we'd have all day. <sighs> this is going to keep a threat at bay. We have Castle Lockland to draw out of the Mulligan. Uh... I'm keeping this. This is incredibly greedy, and I do not recommend anybody keep this, but I don't want to go to five, and this seems viable because this will stop the opponent's game plan. All right, and they have a mana dork. There's an Oath of Liliana, which is fine. That'll actually make Gideon a 3.2 turn clock, so essentially a four turn clock. Nope, three turn clock, unless they gain life here, which they won't. Yep, they get a scry two. Puts two cards to the bottom, so they might have an awkward draw again. Okay, then we draw six mana Soren. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not a fan of fixing for the opponent whenever I can, so let's just enter Planner Beacon. Then we should be set up to Urborg next turn, make them sack probably the Charming Mist or Elvish Mystic. No, you know what? Let's stick with Charming Mystic. I can't be wrong. 
Unless they run out a new creature and sack that. Okay, well, that means they don't have Dubious Challenge. That's a kind of okay clock. They'll take four, go to 12, run out Gideon, and they can't attack again. This Charming Prince scries two to the bottom. Ooh, boy. Uh, Lily might be coming down before Gideon. But I think she has to come out, or Oath of Liliana can come out now. Just because we haven't actually cast this yet, I kind of want to have some fun with it. Uh, Liliana here, shrink the Charming Prince, and then Gideon try to protect it is probably the correct line. Okay, they kept the Elvish Mystic, so they might be trying to make a Xenagos drop here, and then that means Charming Prince can attack for four. Did turn Fabled Passage into a swamp for him. That's interesting. So, I don't have enough white sources to Gideon. If they're on Collected Company, Authority of the Consoles won't actually stop anything. But now this Liliana can create a zombie token and kill off the mystic and I should be kind of defended. So kill that. It's also kind of telling that they kept the mystic over the charming prince. It really means that they were trying to get their mana up. Though I'm not sure why. I guess we'll figure it out if they drop something big. I know that's like awesome insight there, but... Uh, I might have actually tried to trade with the zombie while I still could. Okay, first things first. Castle Lock Lane. Then I can Gideon and Thoughtseize, and that's probably happening. Let's take a look at what they're working with first. World Spine Worm and Battle Rage. Okay. Um, this is going to be the bigger problem, but this is a combo kill. So I think we're going to take the... Actually, if I Gideon and Zero here, that means that I can't get killed by the team or Battle Rage. Unless they put two giant creatures into play. So I guess that's the Worm. They get to shuffle it back into their deck. But then we're going to shrink this guy so he doesn't do anything. Then we're going to filter into white-black with a colorless. Then we'll tap for white. There's a Gideon of the Trials. We'll gain more life. And then zero him. And I'm feeling pretty confident where we're at. A single land puts us on Soren, and we're just going to start draining the opponent. A uh, slight mistake there. I should have attacked with the zombie token because I was getting an additional one. The end of turn triggers slightly. Disguised in the card. Okay, anguish done making means that this is over. Uh, not going to get an additional zombie token, so let's go ahead and just Gideon and attack in with two of our creatures. Leave one zombo back. But it's going to take something pretty amazing to win this for opponent. It's going to have to be like an Emrakul. Yeah, I think it's just an Emrakul. And they have to cast it. They can't just put it into play with Dubious Challenge. Yep, there's your Charming Prince. I assume he scries going for the combo kill. Yep. But needing a giant creature that comes into play and stays in play, put two cards to the bottom. Okay, that's a murderous cut. Shrinky Dink you. Zero. I, I can activate Shambling Vent, but then I can't kill a creature, so we're just going to be conservative and stay back. I 
activating shambling next vent next turn should be a kill if I murderous cut it in step. Dubious challenge. Yep, you got it. Opponent gets to look, I should probably read this card. Opponent gets to look at the top 10 cards of your library, exile two of them, then shuffle your library. An opponent may choose one of those cards and put it into the battlefield. Yep, and they didn't hit their combo, so they conceded, and we four won. Uh, yeah, first things first, let's go ahead and open our chest. We earned them, let's do it. Yay, chess! <laughs> Brain in a jar. I was trying to figure out a way to break this with the adventure creatures. It can't be done. <laughs> um, all right, uh, we get Devout Lightcaster. This is a moderate sideboard card, and this actually sees play in some taxes lists in Legacy, so I could potentially see that being a buck or two. Uh, we get the Monk Avatar Border. Marshall Coop is a commander card. Mind Blaze. Choose a non-land card and choose a non-land card name and a number greater than zero. Target player reveals their library. If it contains exactly the number of chosen cards, deals eight damage to that player for six mana. Kamigawa, go home. You're drunk. All right. Ooh, fast land. Zealous conscripts. Um, this is a Another combo piece for Splinter Twin combo that most people don't realize in Cube, but fast lands are always good, especially the ones in Jund. And wow, yeah, those are some terrible chess. All right, takeaway for Orzov Super Friends. Uh, yeah, my friends list is pretty stacked. I apparently was Facebooking all weekend because I cast a ton of Planeswalkers and had a lot of them at a time. Uh, we had some really fun games. Typically, when you're playing cards like these, you typically have fun games. Like, I did punt versus the budget mono green, and then I beat the real mono green. So, I think we could have 5 0 with this. Uh, the thing that always has to go with this archetype of deck, and I've said it multiple times already, is if board clears are good, this deck can be good. If your fumigates, your settle the wreckages, your clanner cleansings, if those cards are good, you're fine. Uh, there are a couple of asterisks on this league, though. We did not play versus Copycat, which is probably the best deck in the format. And we also didn't play against Oko, which is in most of the Copycat decks. Oko can literally just elk our Planeswalkers, which is why we actually had two Elder Spells, two Murderous Riders, three Pithy Needles. Like, we were prepped for Oko, and we didn't even play him. Uh, I do think Oko is a long-term problem for this deck, because you can, like, Kaya on three, then your opponent Okos and just hits him, or they just Oko anything on turn two. Like... He's just going to be really valuable. So some number of the heroes downfalls, murderous riders, like you need those answers for Oko. And I think we kind of copied, handled copycat pretty well. We had the three pithy needles. We had the authority of the consoles. We did pretty well. Uh, a lot of what this deck was trying to do is gain life, though. We are moderately budget. The expensive cards are obviously Liliana, the Vel, Thoughtseize, and then some of the lands. But given how cheap this deck was, I actually think it's definitely worth considering buying into like it's a fun deck it will perform pretty well if you put in the reps you'll know what you need to do with it and honestly i gotta cast elspeth i gotta cast Sorngrim nemesis i ulted liliana like three times tonight i could have ulted kaya probably three times tonight like we did exactly what our deck wanted to and the real surprise was we actually ulted the sword tonight where our opponent had to sack a creature versus the walls deck um but Overall, pretty fun. I don't think I'd classify it as Tier 1 or maybe even Tier 2. It's probably going to be a lot like Modern, where this deck can put up results, and people want to play with these cards, but they're not necessarily good, and they won't accomplish much in the meta. But it's still going to be viable, and you're going to be able to spike FNM with it. So if you're looking for a deck like that, and you own most of these cards, by all means, run with it. Um, anyways, guys, I am 13. Thank you for sticking around tonight. Really? It didn't update my... Okay. Uh, well, I am 13. My schedule's over there on the left. I'm currently updating it with the new document. There we go. If you have a fun deck idea, I play all kinds of fun decks. We have a full history of them up on YouTube, but if you have a fun deck idea, send it to me. Uh, happy to take a look. If it's something really cool, I'll play it on stream. No guarantees on that, but if you have a fun deck and I need to get do it, I'm in. Uh, otherwise, I can comment, help you build it, whatever you need. But we have a full history of our decks. We're exploring Pioneer a lot. Feel free to check us out, and 
I suppose I will be seeing you guys all next Sunday. Again, I did stream tonight because tomorrow life happened, so tomorrow night's canceled, but happy to see you Wednesday. Have a good one, everybody.